Hi there. My name is Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist for the National Weather Service. Today is February 7th. It's a Thursday. And this is a water supply briefing looking at February 2013. A few thoughts on our current situation. Uh, the feeling is that if you live in the valley, you've seen all the snow we have and it's plentiful. The idea is it's a 5 to 1 to 10 to 1 ratio of snow in the valley to snow in the mountains, so we must have a great deal of snow in the mountains, and that's just not the case. We have a large percentage of normal snow in the valleys and the benches, but when you look up in the mountains, we have below average snow, and that's something to consider throughout this briefing. So let's take a look at precipitation and the anomaly that goes with it. When we look at the water year, which started in October 2012 through December, basically up to January 1st, what we see is that northern, Minnesota, northern Utah has normal to a little bit above normal snowpack, and things were looking quite good. Then we moved into January, and you can see through this graphic with the warmer colors dominating the landscape that we now have below average precip through January, especially snowpack. When you combine that and look at the entire water year, we get a picture that's somewhat normal in some areas of northern Utah, but really throughout the remainder of the state, we lost ground with that dry January. So we have the southeast looking right around 70, maybe 75 percent of normal, and then the, uh, the northern areas are doing right around normal. But we also have some dry soils to consider also with regard to the water supply. Here's an illustration of the valley versus mountain snow topic that we talked about earlier. During January, Salt Lake Airport had 190% of normal, while Lake Fork Basin in the UN is at 11,000 feet, had 64% of normal. The higher you went, it seemed like the snow wasn't as, as plentiful when compared to the percent of normal. Now we can look at temperature as far as January goes. And January was very, very cold. These temperatures were taken at the Salt Lake City Airport which is located in the Salt Lake Valley and it's a direct result of the inversion where the cold air sinks to the lowest parts of the valleys. And we see some areas, uh, you know, some days had up to 15 to 20 degrees below normal when you look at this graphic. Anything above is above normal, all the lines pointing down are below normal and it's each day of the month through the 31st. When you average all of this up, shows 10 degrees below average for January as far as temperatures in these bottom areas and that's what we saw and it's a good indication that we didn't get much mixing we didn't get much storm activity that it was very cold down at the lower elevations and stagnant air mass from high pressure here's some interesting stats that we put out uh, during January as far as the Salt Lake City Airport and these stats all pretend to cold and snow when you think of how snowy it was how cold it was we were close to a bunch of records and it really illustrates a lot of cold air, a lot of snow in the valleys, but yet not much going up in the mountains. Let's take a look at water supply now. For the, the area we're talking about, this is basically the Colorado River Basin along with the Eastern Great Basin. And that's in the kind of the aqua color. And that's the area we're forecasting for from the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center who produces these forecasts. When you look at the forecast themselves, we can see that we have most areas in Utah are around 70% of normal. Yellow is in that 70 to 90%, but the basin averages hover around 70%. The Weaver drainage is at 65%, which denotes that red color. And then many areas of Colorado are red along with the Lake Powell drainage coming into southeastern Utah. There's parts of the San Juan in yellow and those are right around 70% of normal. So still 60 to 70% of normal snowpack runoff and that's the volume of runoff that's, that's forecasted to flow from April 1st through the end of July. And that's where we are right now as far as February 1st. Now the weather will dictate whether this gets better or worse. The more storms we have, these numbers will go up. The less storms we have all the way through to the spring, we'll drop these numbers off. So let's take a look at individual points and we'll start with the Bear River Basin. The Bear River Basin is our northernmost basin in Utah and it's located here in this aqua color basin and trying to outline where the water flows. The first point we'll look at is right here and this is Woodruff Reservoir 
And that shows that the forecast is declining. The middle dot is the most probable amount of water and volume that's going to come out of the mountains. And the two outliers at the end on top are the 10th and 90th percentile, meaning uh, the, the 90th percentile is right around 49,000. We should get that. But if things really pick up with the weather and we get wet, it could go up to 160,000 acre feet for this point. The January forecast, now we move to February and we th see things drop off. This convention of how we're looking at things will continue through the rest of this briefing. But this is the Bear River as it goes to Woodruff Narrows Reservoir. The other area we're going to look at is what's called Stewart Dam and its inflow into Barrow Lake. And the February forecast calls for about 130,000 acre feet. It's close to median, almost bang on, so we're, we're kind of in the ballpark there. Um, but still, a little more storm, a little more snow would be better. Let's move over to the Weber. And the Weber Basin is, is the mountains that are to the east of Ogden and some of the areas along the front. And we're going to look at three points here. The first being uh, Pine View Reservoir. And we'll see that that forecast has dropped from January 1st to February. And that's a direct result of the lack of storm activity we had. And we're looking at about 70,000 acre feet going into Pine View. We'll look at headwater area near the town of Oakley on the Weaver River, and that's about 80,000 acre feet. We will also look at East Canyon Creek near Morgan, and that's about 21,000 acre feet, a little bit below median. So let's move over to the Six Creek drainage, and this area is the mounds east of Salt Lake County, and that's also illustrated in this aqua color we have here. We're going to look at two points. And the first being Little Cottonwood. And we see it's below the median at about 30,000 acre feet. And then we're going to move over to Emigration Creek, which is a low elevation watershed, and see that that's about maybe 2,500 acre feet. It's a small watershed producing small amounts. But yet, this is the amount of water that we're looking at for the water supply for Salt Lake County. Now we're going to move over to Utah Lake River Basin. And this is are the, are the mountains and the watersheds that are to the east of Provo. And the first one we'll look at is Deer Creek Reservoir. That's right there. And you can see the forecast decline. We're right around 100,000 acre feet expected from April through the end of July. And we'll also look at Spanish Fork. And that forecast has remained pretty much the same, right around maybe 55,000 acre feet expected. Now we'll move over to the Deschain River Basin. And this is the south aspect of the Uinta Mountains. And we'll look at three points uh, as far as this watershed goes. And we'll start with an area called Soldier Springs. It's really inflow into Strawberry Reservoir. And that's about 40,000 acre feet, a little bit above the median, which is good. We'll also look at the, near the Duchesne River near the town of Taviona. And we're going to have right around 80,000 acre feet below median. And then we'll look at what's called Knight's Diversion, and that's over this way. And that's about 140,000 acre feet below median. Now we'll move up into the upper Green River Basin. And this basin is located primarily in Wyoming and flows southward and moves into the confluence of the Colorado. But we'll start right about there uh, with Flaming Gorge Reservoir. And that forecast declined to about 600,000 acre feet. And then we'll move down to Green River, Utah, where we're looking at about 1.9 million acre feet coming into that area. It, it, it's a large drainage, high flows, um, but yet we're below median for this basin. Now let's take a look at the inflow into Lake Powell. And that encompasses parts of Colorado. It also takes into account what's going on in the... Uh, eastern parts of the central mountains on the on the uh, Utah area and also the Green River. And we'll look at two points here. This is the, near the town of Cisco on the Colorado River and the forecast has dropped to maybe about 2.4 million acre feet well below median and that's just due to the abysmal snow conditions in Colorado as of where we are right now. Also in Lake Powell uh, inflow itself uh, the median is about maybe 7 million acre feet. We're looking at about 3.9 million acre feet as most probable. And so that's a little, a little problematic for that area. They could use some more water. 
Now moving over to the Sevier River Basin in south central Utah, and we'll look at this point right here, and that's near the town of Hatch, and that's the headwater areas for the Sevier, and we will see it about oh maybe 40,000 acre feet with the forecast remaining pretty stable. Now the snowpack in south central and southwestern Utah has, is actually quite good compared to normal. When we move downstream though, uh, things get a little worse, but not too bad really. Maybe about 60,000 acre feet and the forecast is remaining steady, actually quite close to median, a little bit above. So that's, that's still okay. Severe is looking okay as far as the headwater goes. Now let's move over to the Virgin River Basin, and this is the, the drainage area that's near St. George, Utah, and we're going to look at a headwater area, the Virgin, near the town of Virgin, and that's right there, and that is looking about 50,000 acre feet. The forecast remains steady, but it's above normal, above the median, so that's kind of nice to see there. Again, the Virgin is doing quite well with snowpack as of early February with percent of normal. We'll look at the outlet in the town of Littlefield at about 50,000 acre feet which is above median so that's good so the Virgin's looking quite good compared to uh, some of these other areas so there you have it this is Brian McInerney I'm the hydrologist with the National Weather Service in Salt Lake City there's my phone number there's my email please send me any information you may have or if you have any questions we can go from there I do appreciate your time listening to this briefing and we'll do another one of these in March thank you